It's a scene no one expected to wake up to again in Northern Ireland. The murder of soldiers and the targeting of civilians. Six people were gunned down at the gates of Mazarine Army Barracks in Antrim at around 20 past nine last night. Two soldiers were killed. Another two military personnel and two pizza delivery men are all seriously ill in hospital. The ruthlessness of the attack has shocked even those investigating the murders. There's no doubt whatever in my mind that this was an attempt at mass murder. There were at least two gunmen, both of whom carried uh, automatic rifles. There was a third person present who drove a vehicle. Uh, so from that point of view, this was a, a pre-planned attempt at mass murder and nothing short of it. The police service of Northern Ireland is now hunting for at least three men. Two fired the shots from automatic rifles, another was driving the getaway vehicle. No group has claimed responsibility for the murders, but it has all the hallmarks of a dissident Republican terrorist attack. These people who were responsible for this last night, it's a very small number of criminals, uh, but they do not represent anybody here. They are self-obsessed thugs, and we will track them down and we will bring them to justice. Just a few days ago, the Chief Constable, Sir Hugh Ord, requested the help of special forces to gather information on dissident Republicans. He also revealed that the threat from Republican terrorist splinter groups was at its highest in seven years. The condemnation has been widespread. Those who carried out this attack, in their sick way, probably think that they have committed some sort of spectacular with an attack on the British Army. Let's be very clear, what they have committed is an outrage against the Irish people. In the last hour, the first floral tributes have been laid at the scene. It's been 12 years since a soldier was killed in Northern Ireland, and people here are asking how and why the past has come back to haunt them.
by the IRA at the Bloomfields House at Crawford's Burn in one of the wealthiest parts of County Down. The devices were planted in a circle round the house, but only two of them exploded and the detonator on a third. That and the remaining bomb were found to have been packed with bullets as well. The house was severely damaged. Police said if all four bombs had exploded, the building would almost certainly have been demolished. Police who were on the scene within three minutes actually stepped over one of the bombs to rescue the Bloomfield family from the smoke-filled house. There was one at the front door, I understand, and one seen at the side of the house, and once that was seen, then we cleared the whole area, then after that. So your men risked their lives, actually? Yes, I would think so. Army experts removed what the bombs were made of, Semtex, a powerful Czechoslovakian explosive supplied to the IRA by Libya. Sir Kenneth, his wife Elizabeth Lady Bloomfield and their son Timothy weren't injured, but they were treated in hospital for shock. The IRA in a statement said they were warning other senior civil servants involved in formulating or advising on military strategy to resign their posts, or in their words, face the consequences. On a row of terraced houses on the edge of the Catholic Bogside area of Londonderry, the police today made one of the biggest arms and explosive finds for many years in the city. Soldiers and policemen filled the street as the weaponry was spread out in a small carpeted room. There was the barrel of a military general purpose machine gun and the armor-piercing bullets to go with it. Lumps of the powerful Czech-made Semtex explosive looking like the end of a loaf of French bread. An assortment of guns, a Russian AK-47 rifle, a pistol and Russian-made hand grenades and a professionally made military mortar. There were two gallons of nitrobenzene, the key ingredient in bombs made with agricultural fertilizer. There's no word of anybody being arrested after the find, and the police are appealing for information. ...in Belfast city centre this afternoon. No one was hurt and damage was slight. It's highly likely that the explosive used in the device was bought with the proceeds of mafia-style organised crime. The security forces estimate that the IRA spends more than £5 million a year on its campaign of violence. Most of the money comes from armed robberies, protection rackets and frauds connected with building contracts. A lot of cash is also made from drinking clubs in Republican areas and gaming machines. Legitimate businesses have been set up to launder the money, including shops, video clubs and taxi firms. The IRA is even thought to have an interest in some estate agents' firms and some hotels. On the Loyalist side, paramilitary organisations like the Ulster Defence Association are thought to collect more than £2 million a year using the same sort of methods as the IRA. Sinn Féin spokesman Danny Morrison said that under the guise of hitting the IRA, the British government would be able to seize people's homes, cars and savings. It was aimed at intimidating Republicans into submission but the security forces will welcome any new powers which help them clamp down on a problem of daunting size and complexity. Thank you. 